in this module, we shall be studying risk management in Islamic banking and finance by way of minimizing it. In the previous model, we highlighted that the risk can be managed by way of avoiding it, by making sure that it gets minimized by way of certain actions by sharing it. In this module, we shall use an example of risk management by way of minimizing it. And this example comes from Banking Murabaha. Risk management in Banking Murabaha is a topic which has been covered in various textbooks and of course in manuals on the practice of Islamic banking and finance. In Banking Murabaha transactions, there is an inevitable delay in buying a commodity by the bank and selling it on to the customer. This delay in the two sales may pose some risks for an Islamic bank. These risks are not important in case of ordinary trade. If a shopkeeper is involved in buying and selling, that inventory period is actually not considered as as risky as in case of Islamic banks or banks in general. In order to avoid this risk or in order to minimize the risk of ownership of the commodity during this period, the banks may ask for a security deposit from the customers. So when the application of the customer for a financing based on Murabaha is accepted, following that a security deposit may be required. This is called Hamish Jidiya in Arabic. It's only a name for security deposit and this is considered as a risk management tool. Once someone has put some money as a deposit, the risk of that customer going away without entering into the transaction gets minimized. Alternatively, alternatively the bank may ask the customer to sign an undertaking to purchase. This is based on the concept of WAD. And this WAD in this context is binding on the customer. Once the customer promises to buy the commodity or the asset from the bank, once the bank has bought it from the market, this becomes a binding undertaking. Let us look at the flow of uh, the things during a banking murabaha transaction. We have looked into this structure previously, but one thing which I have highlighted in this case is the stages to ensure that you understand the nature of risk in case of a banking murabaha transaction. Stage one or step one is negotiations between the customer who would be seeking finance from the bank. So negotiations take place between the customer and the vendor. We are assuming that in this case, the customer is looking for car financing from the bank. So once negotiations have been concluded successfully, the customer would then approach the bank for financing. Bank scrutinizes the application and if the application is successful, the bank would inform the customer that we are happy to finance you. Because this is not just money lending, but rather in case of Murabha, the bank will have to buy the car from the market, from the vendor, and then it will have to sell it on to the customer. Because this is a Sharia requirement, the bank would like to make sure that 
once it has bought the car from the car dealer, the customer actually then buys it. For this, a security deposit is required at this stage. Or alternatively, as I said, the customer may be required to sign a purchase undertaking. Once this has been done, the bank would buy the car from the vendor and sell it on to the customer on a murabha basis. So this part actually, step four or five, these are risk management measures in a banking murabha transaction. Of course, this would not eliminate the risk altogether, rather it would minimize the risk. What are other risks in a Murabha transaction? Risk of fault is there as well. Remember, the bank is buying the car from a vendor, and there is quite possible that at that point in time, there was a fault in the car. The bank enters into an arrangement with the vendor to ensure that the manufacturing faults and other warranties are transferred to the buyer. This is very important. Banks are banks. They don't want to get involved into all this kind of conversations and negotiations that, oh, the car was faulty, this tire wasn't good, or this seat wasn't uh, as required. Hence, at the point of purchasing the car, the bank would like to have an agreement with the vendor saying that I'm not buying this car for myself, it's for a customer. If there is a fault, and there is a possibility of this, then you would be dealing with the customer directly. And if there is an issue of warranty, you cannot say that, oh, we sold the car to you, to the bank, why this customer is coming to us. So risk of fault is another one, and this risk can be minimized by way of an arrangement with the vendor. There are some operational risks related to Sharia as well. As by now you have known that Murabha, banking Murabha involves two sales. One sale is between the vendor and the bank, and the other one is between the bank and the customer. It is a Sharia requirement that the bank must buy the car first from the vendor and sell it to the customer afterwards. Because there is a saying of the Prophet وسلم, which says that you cannot sell something which you do not own. If the bank has not bought the car, how can the bank then sell it on to the customer. So in certain cases in Islamic banks, because all these documents are being signed and executed uh, at the same time, sometimes bank officers may get the signatures on the uh, second sale first before the sale number one. This is actually a risk. If that has happened and Sharia audit has identified it, then there are chances that the bank may lose its income arising from that transaction. That income might be given to a charity. So this would be an income loss, and this is called Sharia-related risk in an Islamic financial transaction. To avoid this kind of risks, Islamic banks have started automating the Sharia process. There are other risks, and we would look into these risks uh, in a few modules. And however, at this point in time, it is useful to highlight that there is a credit risk involved in a banking Murabha transaction or any other financing transaction. To minimize this credit risk, Islamic banks may ask for a collateral. In a lot of cases, 
the financed item is actually considered as a collateral. There are other risks like the cost of capital risk and we would go into details of this one when we look into risk management in Morabha as a mode of financing in a later module. However, at this point in time, it is sufficient to say that building in cost of capital variations in pricing of the product based on Morabha should minimize this kind of risk. 